Kia ora e ho, haere mai, come and join me. I've just been looking at a map at the back of this book, but I'll show you that later. Let's have a look at the cover first. It's called The True Anzac Story of Violet Scarf. It's written by Colleen Brown and illustrated by Emma Lay. And I thought it was a perfect book for today. Would you like an Anzac story? A special one about Violet's scarf? Or make yourself nice and comfy and we can read the story together. It starts in March 1915. It's a true story about Violet Cloley, aged eight. Violet Cloley slung her school bag over her shoulder, pulled her hat firmly on her head and hurried off to school with her older sister, Myrtle. This is Violet here. A lady from the Red Cross was coming to talk to her class about how they could help with the war effort and she didn't want to be late. Wow! Look at how she gets to school. Across the beach. I'm travelling around the district asking students to help our soldiers overseas, the Red Cross lady told the children. They'll need all sorts of items including food, clothing, soap, razor blades, socks and scarves. Everything we collect will be shipped from New Zealand to the soldiers. Violet thought of her brother George. They hadn't had a letter from him in weeks. Her brother Lionel would be the next to go to the war. Can you see a picture of her brother George? That's who she's thinking about. Later that evening, Violet asked her mother, What can I do to help the soldiers? You can knit, said her mother. I could knit a scarf, replied Violet. You'll need to knit a dark coloured scarf, just like the soldier's uniform, said Violet's mother. Hmm, I wonder if she's knitting. Or maybe she's sewing. Violet knitted through the month of April and into May. Sometimes she could only knit a few rows each day because there was so much work to be done on the farm. And if you follow the yarn or the wool, you'll see all the jobs that she had to do on the farm. The scarf got longer and longer. I really don't like this muddy brown colour, muttered Violet. I wonder if I can sneak in a few rows of my favourite colour. Blue. No one will notice it once the scarf is rolled up, she thought. Something just from me. Finally, the scarf was finished. Her brother Lionel tried it on. Not bad, Violet. Why not just give it to me, he teased. No, it's for some soldier far, far away from home, replied Violet, waggling her finger at her brother. <laughs> Doesn't it look good? What a great scarf. Violet wrapped the scarf and tied it with some scraps of bright red wool. She attached a tag. Then she took the parcel to school. The headmaster told the children that their parcels would join others from schools around New Zealand. It would take many weeks for their gifts to get to the soldiers. And so, Violet Scarf started its long journey from the bottom of the South Island to a soldier overseas. And you can see where it has to go from the bottom of the South Island all the way on a train up to Christchurch by ship to Wellington and then overseas. Wow. And parcels came from all over the South and North Island. When the parcels arrived in Wellington, they were loaded into a huge ship. The ship was laden with hundreds of young soldiers and supplies heading to the war.
let's follow it. Here's the ship. Started in Wellington. It went to Australia. Madagascar. Aden. Alexandria. And then all the way up here to France and Great Britain. It's a long distance, isn't it? And by ship, it takes a long time. Violet's brother George was in France. He worked with horses and wagons, bringing supplies to the battlefront and camps. It was tough, dangerous work. Sometimes he carted wounded soldiers on his wagon back from the battlefields to hospital. He missed home. He looked forward to letters telling him what everyone was doing and what was happening on the farm. Can you see him here with a letter? One day, while George was feeding his animals, there was great excitement in the camp. George! George! Red Cross parcels! Come on! Parcels from home! George looked up to see soldiers racing from all directions towards a big wagon in the middle of their camp. He dropped his buckets and started running. Maybe it felt a little bit like Christmas. Soldiers crowded in. Two soldiers leapt onto the back of the wagon and started tossing the parcels willy-nilly out to all the waiting men. George joined the crowd of soldiers. He saw a parcel flying towards him. He threw his hands in the air, up he jumped and grabbed it as it flew by. He pulled it down and read the tag. George could not believe it. Of all the parcels in all the camps across all the battle sites, he had caught a parcel from his sister Violet. George drew a deep breath and opened the parcel. A scarf. He wrapped it around his neck. He breathed in again. He smelt the wool, the farm, the kitchen, his mother's baking. He smelt home. George wore his scarf when he could. He kept it rolled up in his pack when he wasn't wearing it. It was his most precious possession. At the bottom of his pack was Violet's tag. George stayed in France for two more years. The war finally ended in 1918, and George returned to Riverton. George, you're wearing my scarf! I am Violet, I am. Home at last. Home to the farm and his family. Home. And that's the end of the story. And what a beautiful ending to the story. Because it's a true story. It's based on the story of Violet and the scarf she knitted for her brother, George. Fancy that scarf getting to George all the way on the other side of the world when all the parcels were being thrown out willy-nilly. Well, in the back of the book, there's more information about what happened to the scarf and what happened to Violet. And you can find out more by visiting colleenbrownbooks.com or copypress. Dot co dot nz. A wonderful story reminding us about a very special day, Anzac Day. I've got some other stories in my Anzac playlist and some book reviews about some of the books too. We might like to go and check that out next. Or whatever you do, have a wonderful day and come and visit me again soon. Kaikite, my friend.